Question 8. Here we have a ball striking a horizontal surface with momentum P. Okay, this is really interesting. Normally, they will tell you that the ball is moving at a certain speed, right? But in this question, they oh, straight away momentum already. Okay, so I'm going to highlight the word momentum. At an angle alpha, or sorry, angle theta to the surface as shown. Okay, no problem. The ball rebounds with the same magnitude of momentum at the same angle theta from the surface. So the ball is going to come here and reflect when it hits the surface. Ball is in contact with the surface for a time t. Okay, what is the magnitude of the average resultant force acting on the ball during the collision. So immediately, I think to myself, to find resultant force, right here, to find resultant force, I will need change in momentum over time. Unfortunately, our momentum is a vector, as it's pretty obvious from this drawing, it's a vector. So to find the change in momentum for vector, I need to take initial minus final. So I will coin this uh, P1, I say this is the initial momentum, going down in this direction. This is my P1. Okay, and the final momentum P2 will be this rebound in this direction. Magnitude is the same, but direction not the same, huh? okay? So the answer cannot be zero, lah. hello. You can, the thing cannot suddenly change its motion, you see? A basic, very basic idea about forces. Object will not change its direction of motion unless acted on by a resultant force. This is zero, okay? Not P minus P, because P is a vector. Vector. Okay, so we need to find a change in momentum. So whenever there's a vector change in momentum, you have two choices. You either draw a vector diagram or you resolve your vectors. I like resolving because I teach physics. So I'm going to split P into vertical and horizontal component like this. So here would be alpha. Maybe I should zoom in a bit. Okay. So here is alpha. This component is P cos theta, sorry, this is theta, not alpha. And this is P sine theta. Okay, same idea. I explained this earlier in the paper already. I'm going to repeat the same thing for P2. Okay, notice that I always do it at where the arrow start. Because that's how I do it. La. But it's vector, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, if I look at this, this will be P cos theta, and this will be P sine theta. So one interesting thing to note is that the horizontal momentum did not change. Check this out. Initial is P cos theta. Final is P cos theta. So the change in momentum in the x direction or in the horizontal direction is zero. No change in momentum. The only change in momentum is the vertical direction. So you see uh, the vertical direction. It was P sine theta downwards. Now it is P sine theta upwards. So it was going down. And then after rebound, it went up. So it is the vertical component that changes. Horizontal component is the same. So I'll write that down. Change in momentum in vertical component or vertical direction will be equal to negative. Okay, let's say we take a direction now as positive. Let's say we take up as positive, down as negative. So I will take final minus initial. Final is P sine theta upwards. Positive P sine theta. Minus initial will be negative, negative P sine theta. 
okay so i'm taking the final momentum so i'm just gonna right here uh. this one is my initial p1 in the vertical direction this is p2 in the vertical direction y okay so from here i will get p sine theta plus p sine theta which is 2p sine theta so now if you want to find the force i can take change in momentum over time so it will be 2p sine theta divided by t and say it's d no? okay so this is one method whenever there is vector you have two choices option one resolve so what I did was, I split the initial vector into x and y component, I split the final vector into x and y component, and then I examine which component has changed. For example, p cos theta didn't change, p sine theta reverse direction. So the magnitude of change is two times. But what if the horizontal and vertical also change? Then it becomes a little bit complicated. Or you have to repeat this one in the horizontal direction. Find the delta p x okay la, i write here who knows maybe they level up this time so if the change in momentum for x is not zero so what you'll do is change in momentum of y is in this direction okay then let's say change in the momentum of x is in the x direction so you just do in this direction. if it's y if it's positive then you draw to the right if it's negative you draw to the left just decide whether the change is positive or negative like in this case this is positive because i took upward as positive and based on my sign calculation my final answer is also positive so this one is when your px your change in momentum in the horizontal direction is not zero so then if you want to find the total change in momentum you have to add you know what to do la pythagoras your way through your total change in momentum in case what can I do? I can change this one to half P. P over 2. I keep the angle the same. I change this one to P over 2. Then there will be PX already. There will be both PX and PY. Can I do it? Yes. Will I do it? Well, if you are sitting for this paper, I, I, won't, I won't do it to you. Lah. Or if you're sitting for my paper. But yeah. Okay. Uh second method when it comes to resolving so already solved the question already but i'm just going to show you the second method if you are more used to the second method which is to draw vector diagram you want to draw vector diagram can and then you have to use solution of triangle this one is a maths method and normally physics people don't like lah but just because i don't like doesn't mean i don't know which is why i normally tell my students just because i don't like doesn't mean I don't do because there's it's okay to have preference but it's important to know what that preference represents okay so this is the first P okay and this is the second P and to find the change in momentum I will need to take P2 minus P1 hi yeah okay so this is p1 <laughs> and this is p2 but uh p2 i can keep the red arrow is p2 i can keep but p1 i cannot p1 i have to reverse direction because this is positive p1 so negative p1 will be in this direction oops okay so this is negative p1 so I'm going to do a rough sketch here, but it will look something like this. Okay, I'll write down for you. Chill a bit, I need space. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. So P2 is this one. So we can keep P2 in the same direction. This is P2 uh i always transfer angle as i draw vector diagram so this is theta okay i know the magnitude is p i will label it later p1 is in this direction 
this is P1. Meaning if I flip direction, this is negative P1. Okay, and once again, uh, you may want to include an angle here. Okay, so if I do this, it's pretty obvious that theta is here. Okay, okay. and then where is the change? The change is this P2 minus P1, which is actually equal to P2 plus negative P1. These are vectors. Okay, you cannot minus vectors. So the resultant is actually here. Here to here. Is it vertical? I don't know. Better not say. I mean, I know it's vertical because I already resolved. La, but let's say you don't know. La, okay, it draw, you draw la, something. So this is the change in momentum. But you cannot conclude whether it's vertical or not just based on what we had just now. But there are a few things that you know. For example, if I were to build, because now what I need to do is to find delta p or the length of the green color arrow. So this is a right angle triangle, ma, right? I always cut isosceles triangle into right angle triangle. Easy to solve. This is p. This is also p. Okay. So here to here, this length here to the middle here, here to here is del p over 2. Okay, and if I do the whole Zorro alternate angle of parallel lines thing, this is my theta. So what I could do is I could say sine theta is equal to opposite, which is change in momentum divided by 2, over hypotenuse, which is p. So the change in momentum here will now be change in momentum over 2 is p sine theta. Don't skip steps. <laughs> Change in momentum will now be 2p sine theta. You got your answer ready? So hence, force is change in momentum over time. So that would be 2p sine theta divided by t. So for certain people who are a bit more inclined to geometry, drawing a vector diagram is faster. So your ability to draw this diagram from the vector equation. So let's think about it. We want to find the change in momentum. So I have to take this red arrow plus negative the blue arrow. So red arrow plus negative blue arrow because blue arrow is pointing downwards. So negative will point upwards in this direction, opposite direction. So then I can find the resultant. And I'm fairly confident that the, the triangle is straightforward because both P's have the same theta and the same magnitude. So this is an isosceles triangle. Whenever I have an isosceles triangle, I can easily build a right angle triangle. And from the right angle triangle and normal trigo, sine, cosine, I'm quite confident that I can find the change in momentum. Cool. So that is one method. Or you can always split X and Y component. Just like this one, if you cannot split into right angle triangle, you can always solution of triangle and use the cosine rule. But you may go to Holland, Holland and cannot come back. You know, that's what Chinese people say. You get lost. You may not be able to return. <laughs> All right. So that's it for the question.